Hallelujah. Book of Job chapter 33. Mm. If you start from verse 12, what did he say? Look, let me answer you in this. You are not right or just. Verse 12, Job chapter 33, verse 12. Look, let me answer you in this. Let me answer you. In this you are not right or just. For God is greater and far superior to man. God is greater and far superior to man. Now, this is where we're going. Verse 13 says, Why do you complain against him? Amen. Why do you complain against him? The same God... understand now. I'm not threatening you, but if you know what is good for you, if you know what is good for you, do not miss our mountain prayer retreat. If you're a fellow worker, do not miss our mountain prayer retreat. It's not for leaders. Amen. And our doors are as well open. Whoever that wants to join, allow them. Whether you're a fellow worker or non-fellow worker. Amen? Our doors are open. This is not a private stuff. It's a general thing, okay? So do not discriminate. It's for the will of God, not for the will of the church. So prepare yourself. I'm getting it. Yo. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that God is greater than you? Huh? Do you believe that God is greater than you? When you believe that God is greater than you, what makes you think that God cannot solve our problem? You believe that God is greater than you. Why do we still have this double mind? Why do we still have this doubt that God cannot be greater than what we think that is greater than us? Amen. Today it is called the Lord will save you. Amen. The Lord will save you. God is going to save you. But what you need is to believe. What you need is to be ready to be saved. Ha. Praise the Lord. If I do not finish today, I will continue from where I stopped. What you need is to be ready to be saved. When we say God will save you, we're not talking about when you are demon possessed. God will save you from everything. Amen. Amen. He will save you from lack and want. He will save you from opposition. He will save you from suffering. He will save you from disappointment. Everything that will oppose his manifestation, he will save you from it. And the question I will ask you from heaven today, are you even ready to be saved? Woo! Praise the Lord. Are you ready to be saved? Are you ready? Everybody is ready to go to church. We are all ready to pray to God. Are we ready to be saved? It did not say the pastor will save you or bishop will save you.
God himself will save you. But are you ready to be saved? Do you know what it means to be saved? Stop telling me you are born again. You can still be born again, but nothing has been saved in your life. If you have given birth to a child, you will understand. If you have raised a child, you will understand. You will continue to save that child from hunger, from an illiteracy. Saving the child from humiliation. That's why, as a parent, sometimes you deprive yourself beautiful things and buy it for your children. Because you don't want other children to insult them. We save them from shame. We save them from being insulted. We save a child until they are fully matured to become a parent, to become a father or a mother. Even while they have matured, you still want to save them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your mother might have been old, very old. You can ask that woman money, even if you're working. She will give you 20 rand. Why you already have 1,000? Mama, give me money. She will give you. Mama, I'm hungry. She will make sure you eat. Praise the Lord. Our parents will continue to save us till they die. My mother will call me on the phone and start praying for me. Praise the Lord. Because she cannot reach out to me. She knows that I, pray, I use my prayer to save you. So our parents will save us till they die. God will save us till we die. Did you hear that? Our parents save us because they are just a mere mortal. But God is a mortal. You see the difference is now. It means that you will never be abandoned. But are you ready to be saved? Because being saved, it requires a lot of things that the human being seems to find difficult. God is greater than man. Our parents are greater than us because they were here before us. That's why they make sure that we are saved. Check very well. As a parent, even if you do not have a cent, you work hard for your child to be comfortable. And you think that God cannot do that. Praise the Lord. The Lord will save you. Can you say, the Lord will save me? The Lord God will save me. Now, repeat after me. Am I ready to be saved by God? The problem with Christians today, the only one God to save them from demons, from darkness. There's a lot of things that requires the savings and the services of God in our lives. Our mother has to bat us, has to put clothes on us, has to feed us, has to take us to school. Praise the living God. Most of you, you still work hard for, for, to pay, to pay, to pay transport fees for your children to be safe from being kidnapped. If you can go extra mile to pay, you are paying a taxi driver to bring your child from the gate of the entrance of school to the gate of your house. Because you are doing that, you are doing that for safety. You go extra mile. Who is God? If we can just be an ordinary human being, and care so much regarding the safety of our children. Who is God? Praise the Lord. Immediately your child complains. If you don't have now, you say, wait for me. I will do it tomorrow, right? When you don't have money, just say, give me month end. Our children knows our month end now, isn't it? Praise the Lord. And your children are waiting for you. Month end. Immediately, mommy, remember, daddy, remember tomorrow you're going to do this because they know that tomorrow you're going to get an alert. Hallelujah. When you don't have, you tell them to give you time, isn't it? Immediately they complain about hunger, you become stressed. You look for what to cook. Why do we complain when it comes to God? If our parents can hear our voice when we are young, till this moment, some of you, if our parents can hear our voice, if my mother has five million now, and I ask her, Mama, please, can you please give me half a million? As old as she is, she will make a plan and send that money from West Africa to here. Except they don't have a good mother. Praise the living God. She will send it. Why is she sending it? Mama, I'm suffering. I'm broke. 
she will surely send money to me if she has it. Amen. For the fact that a mother is alive, no matter how old they get, they still have the interest of their children in their heart. Who is God? Who is God? You complain too much because you are not ready to be saved. That's why we complain. Amen. So when you read the book of Job, you will see. He said, God, God, for God is greater and far superior. For God is greater and far superior than, superior to man, isn't it? Now he said, why do you complain against him? That he does not answer you with all his doings. Why are you complaining that God is not answering you with all his doings? Wait, let me ask you a question. Is it really true that God is not answering? Or is it with the human being that are missing the point? I, this, is, this, is, this is mind blowing. Excuse me, let, let's face the fact. Is it true to you that God does not care and God is not answering, is not capable of answering you? Or is it you and I that are missing the point? We keep on saying, I am safe. I am safe through Christ Jesus. I am born again. My dear, immediately you mention you are saved, there must be a lot of changes in your life. But Christians today, there's no atom of change in their life. You can be saved from the hand of darkness. Have you been saved from the cold weather? Have you been saved from the rain? Have you been saved from lack of want? It is not all about being born again. People have misinterpreted the reason of being born again. When a child is born, before you even give birth to a child, you must go to the hospital with a cloth, right? Immediately you give birth to a child, you must put cloth on them, right? Cover them very well. Immediately you are born again, God must cover you and start feeding you until you grow. I'm using human terms for you to understand. God has to cover you, put on clothes, or you start feeding, you pay your school fees, put shelter over your head. I'm bringing this illustration of humanity for you to understand God. Who is saying that God do not answer? Is it God that is not answering, that is not changing you, or is it we that are not ready? embrace God saving us. Are we ready to be saved? Anybody that wants to die will surely enter in, the, in front of a moving train or a moving vehicle. You will look for a way to die. Kill yourself. Praise the Lord. Imagine if I'm stabbing myself, if I'm stabbing myself now, we just say, God save me. God, how can he save me? What kind of prayer is that? Amen. So God is far superior than man. God is far superior than you. If you believe so much in your parents, who is telling you not to believe in God? Can we be honest? Including I myself. No matter whatever you have, there will be a time you'll be broke. Sometimes our parents, goes, they go broke. If you are here and you have never lacked food in the house, then you are the Holy Ghost. If you are here, no matter where you stay, no matter the car you drive, no matter the job you have, no matter the amount of your salary, if you are here and you have never suffered of not having food in the house, you are talking. If you are here and you have never woke up in the morning and you are stressed, you have stressed yourself, what are we going to eat today? After all the stress, something will surely come through. The stress, something will, you know, by the time food will come now, you ask yourself, Why was I even stressing myself? By that time, you have finished having headache, you must have finished having high blood pressure, but something will surely come through. That is the prayer of give us this day our daily bread, amen. So, why do we complain against Him? Because our complaint of lack, our complaint of frustration, our complaint of not getting up to the demand regarding our desire is against him. 
I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not that. You are complaining against him. Why? He's far superior than you. You have never complained. Sometimes when there's nothing in the house, our parents, they work hard. They make a plan. If there was a plan when there was nothing in the house, do you think that God will surely make a plan? He said he's superior than a man. It means that he does not make a plan. He has already put everything in motion, but the problem is that we're not ready. Amen. So when you go home, you read this Bible, you'll understand. He said, for God speaks, verse 40, for God speaks once and even twice, yet no one notice. Hey! Did I saw this? Verse 14, for God speak once and even what? Twice, yet no one notices it, including you. God will surely speak and continue to speak. But nobody notices it. The only thing we notice when it has to do with the will of God and God's presence is people's life, negativity, and whatever. You know, the reason why you can never be ready, one of the reasons why you can never be ready to be saved is because you are not minding your business. Because you lack concentration of your life, of yourself. What am I doing with your life? Every time I'm looking at you, I'm monitoring you. What am I doing? What? Your, your life is not even giving me money. Praise the living God. Like by the time I finish preaching with you, I will go and work for myself. If I'm looking at you, with which mind would I use to plan for my prosperity? Are you ready to be saved? Are you ready to be removed from this shame of poverty? Are you ready to be saved? In the area of standing where there is power to overcome other powers. Why did this person die? God did not save me. No, you were not ready. That's why you died. Anybody that refused to eat, anybody that's not ready to eat, we shall die of hunger. Do you know that? If you're not ready to come to the house at night, you will sleep outside. Has your parents ever done that to you? My mother will tell me before six o'clock, you're home. If I'm not yet back home, the door is closed. If you have done that or they have done that to you, you are blessed. I'm not ready to go home now. That's why they must close the door. What will ever make a human being that does not have time here on earth and say, I am not yet ready? Do you think you have time? No, I'm still young. You are still young. I think one day we're going to do a tour, fellow workers. We must go to the graveyard, to the cemetery. When we are passing, you must be reading. Some tombstones are carrying your age. Amen. Some tombstones are carrying lower than your age. Amen. Some tombstones are carrying far below your age. Amen. Some of them, they will just say 2002. 19th May, 2002. 25th May, 2002. Some people were born and died a few days. Amen. And you say you are not ready. Because... You feel that life is waiting for you. Are you ready to be saved? You're always ready to pray, but you're not ready to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, give all this to me. Why are you praying for this? Because you don't want to suffer shame. Why do you want to be rich? You don't want to suffer humiliation. Do you know money makes your voice to be heard? Do you know prosperity? That's why God balances us with everything. Do you know prosperity will help your voice to be heard? Will help you to be noticed? If you are broke, you are members of our family, you are relevant to them. You remember the time you are not working. Nobody wants to talk to you. But now you are working. Everybody is listening to your opinion. Hey, what do you say? What do you say? If you go broke, nobody will listen to you. Man, did you hear me? Man, go and hustle. Because your wife will never listen to you. If you go broke in a family meeting, you are irrelevant. God wants to save you from everything, not just from demons, Amen. not from darkness. He wants to save you to become somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, light, you are looking at light. You, don't, you, you just call it light, right? Bring it down. You will see everything that is compiled together and light came out. God wants to complete you. This is the reason why Christians are no longer possessed. But Satan is still talking to them. To distract them. 
from being ready. People do not hear the voice of God now. We hear the voice of commotion, discrimination, gossip, backbiting, criticism, betrayal. That is the voice we hear today. You sit for one hour. Instead of you to hear the voice of God, you are listening to friends, talking nonsense, talking you out of God's promises and blessings of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. What God has prepared for you. Instead of you to be listening, to enter into that preparation, to enter into his manifestation, you are listening to your friends. Hey, what do you say? What did you say? What did you say? Oh, can, 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 can you talk in? Can, you know, I knew it. I suspected I was hearing it. What were you hearing? Amen. Is it the voice of God? Amen. Everything that you have been hearing today, where has it left you? Amen. The voice of God that you will hear from today, where is it going to leave you? I've not yet read Bible. Long. We're still going to read. I've not started. But that does not mean that I will keep you here. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself, every voice that you have been hearing, where has it left you? Where are you now? Where are you going to be? Amen. Every time I wake up, even before I could try to sleep, there's no way I will not expect something from God. The reason of our failure today is because we're not ready. Do you know there are most of you as big as you are? You cannot be able to carry 10 kg of rice to walk 3 kilometers. You're not ready to carry a heavy weight. Most of you are craving for meat, but you cannot even slaughter a chicken. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Touch it. I am not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Touch. I'm not ready. Then you will eat spinach and pap. We have overlooked the things that we're supposed to be ready to handle. Amen. But when it comes, we're not ready for this, but we're ready for that. An ordinary cockroach. You're not ready to kill it. <laughs> One day you end up running away from flies. Ordinary rat. You're scared. Praise the Lord. You're here shouting fire, 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 fire. And God say, we're not Mamela. Mamela and Tonam. Relax. Imanyana, wait. Fire, fire, fire. No, stop killing. They are dead already. Wait. Fire, no, I know the agree. Wait. I will never agree. Wait. No, 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 no. My sister told me to keep on praying. No, I'm telling you, stop praying. Amen. We'll read the Bible when I come back. We'll read the Bible. You are not ready. For the plans of God. But how can you be thinking of buying a house you will never think of buying food? How can you package yourself going to God's presence leaving many kilometers away behind and you are in God's presence you are not ready? Praise the Lord. Pastors and bishops all these big, 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 big men of God, they are not ready to save you. I, I am not ready to save you. It is God that will save you. So in case all these Christians that keep on relying on their pastors, not me, it's not happening here again, fellow workers. It will not happen in Jesus' name. They keep on relying on their pastor that whenever they have problems, the pastor will save them. Doctors are not moving around with you in your daily activities. You go to the hospital, they treat you, give you medication, you are healed. Business is closed. You come to church, we pray for you, you pay your tithe, you give your offering. Our deal is closed. The rest is up to you. What is up to you? You go to work. From hospital, you still go back to work, right? Meaning that you are meeting different people. From church, you leave the pastors. If they tell you they are praying for you, forget it. You are very lucky that I have not started entertaining myself. After Sunday services, most of you will see me in the mall. Eating steak 
I'm praying for And you will know that I'm not praying for you. I have done what God asked me to do. I will never overdo it. Some pastors are full of entertainment. I can't entertain you. If I finish my work here, I need a very nice meal. Praise the Lord. So you will see me eating steak and salad. Very expensive beef. Praise the Lord. I, I hope you are with me. Because most of you, get ready, buy a new phone with a very good camera. You will hide somewhere and take my pictures and my video. And I will get to the, I'm going to dress nice to post that because I want to look very, very good in your gossip video. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, when I started telling myself, you're going to see me in different malls. Hallelujah. Amen. And definitely, this is a small world. All of you will see me. Get ready. Buy a new phone. May God give you a new phone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. With a beautiful camera in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you understanding me? For those of these Christians, I'm saying the truth. This thing of when you go home, you think that pastor have you in their heart is a lie. I can never carry my heart. You are too heavy for my heart. Amen. What about my life, my prosperity, my business? You think my life ends here? No. God will save me from shame. Imagine all of you manage to buy nice, nice cars and I don't have a car. What will you say? Our pastor, our leader, our bishop, our reverend, our whoever is not anointed. That's why I must walk my way out. Amen. I've walked your way out. By the time we share grace, I'll be, you know, I, I, I'm done. I, I, I finished being used. Amen. After the text finished carrying you, it must go back to the owner with the driver. Like now, I'm just a taxi. But taxi can still be privatized. Taxi can be turned into a private vehicle, right? Uh-huh. This is a public, and that's privacy. So when we finish public, mind their business and leave my privacy. You know, some people want to follow me in their spirit, in their head, and go home. Change your mind. I still want to remind you, there's a reason why God said, renew your mind. Renew your mind. When the mind is renewed, you'll be ready for something new. How many years would you be in God's presence and you can't see anything new? Everything is old. That's why Satan will give you more picture of familiarity. Amen. We'll read Bible when I get back, okay? Amen. Praise the living God. He gives you more of familiarity. You keep on seeking for what you already know. Switch off and switch over. Change over. That's why I say change over. Change over. Go and look for what you do not know and have not seen. Amen. He said, I have not seen what the Lord has for them. That loves him. So why are you still seeking for what you have already seen? For that, I need to see what I have not seen. And now God will start speaking to you. Be ready for something new. And stop always being ready for prayers. Every time you depend on a pastor, man of God, pray for me. Woman of God, pray for me. Hallelujah. If you want to entertain and entice them and bread them, mommy, pray for me. Daddy, pray for me. Daddy and mommy prayer cannot help us. God will save us. Amen. Praise the Lord. No matter how anointed a servant of God can be, <laughs> listen, eh? I, 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 listen I, I'm still a child. I'm still learning. Okay? You see this thing of us trying to force prayer to work. I've ended it. Amen. Brother Ken, has stopped it. And I keep on advising people that are around me. Stop worrying yourself when people's life are not changing. Because they are not ready. When they are ready, they go extra mine. People normally buy tickets. I don't know how long it takes them to save money. Buy tickets, save money for accommodation and everything. They go to Nigeria. Prophet T.B. Joshua. Most of them, they came back the same. Nothing changed in their life. And we're here in South Africa, not far from each other. Now, I'm just giving you an example. And you still can't change. Praise the Lord. People change when they are ready. Now, we are trying to call you for to repent and be ready for something new. When somebody is ready, you don't need to pray for them. We 
would you call a child that is following you to follow you? A child is already following you. Excuse me. Would you, in a house where they have already served food on the plate and the table for you, would you say, I'm hungry? You can't mention that you're hungry. For the fact that the food is already on the table. <laughs> like, instead of saying, I'm hungry, you just say, wow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get back and mind your business. Prepare yourself. Be ready. Hey, man of God, we pray for us today. Woman of God, we pray for us today. Hallelujah. People are beginning to enjoy deliverance. But that is about to end. Amen. You know why I've been keeping quiet? You don't see me on the reverse ground. By the time I come back, if I pray for you twice, and I see you the third time, I will interrogate you. Amen. Is it that you are not doing what I say you should do? Or is it that you refuse to be ready? Is it enough massaging your deliverance ground? It ends. Fire. Come, my dear. Fire. Out. 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 Disappear by fire. Out by fire. Out. I forgot that you're a man. I forgot he's a man. <laughs> fire. Out. Die. Disappear. <laughs> You understand me? They are romancing you there. Anybody that is ready to be saved does not need deliverance. Praise the Lord. There are churches in there. If you have a serious problem, if you are calling me because of a problem, just know that it's beyond you now. You can't come here for nonsense. There's a church where all the members have pastor's phone number. Hey, daddy, I'm having this slight headache. Can you pray for me? Hey, daddy, my upper lip is swollen. The other one is, can you see? Daddy, one of my legs is bigger than the other one. It's natural. Daddy, I don't know what is happening to me. It's like this, my demons are making me to be more darker. <laughs> Every day, Daddy will receive at least 20 or 50 phone calls. Oh, in name of I'm praying for, pray for you for my daughter. Anybody that's entertaining you like that must be eating your money. So in this ministry that you don't eat your money, you don't pay tight and offering, let us go to reality. You will save yourself. God will save you. Praise the Lord. Thank God that this ministry is not challenge God. It's not the kind of ministry challenge, challenge God with 5,000, you get 10,000. God is not a gambler. Amen. Praise the Lord. So for the fact that I'm not telling you to challenge God, challenge yourself. Amen. If you want to challenge God, bring money. If you want to challenge yourself, listen to the voice of God. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All of us here, eh? almost everyone, you're not ready for a change. Even when change is coming to your way, coming to your way, you're offended. You get angry, you attack, you retaliate. You change your mood, mood swing. Because you're in your menstrual period. Even a man goes on menstrual period. When a man is having a mood swing in the church, let me not start. To, let, this must quench now. A man. Even, okay, women, we understand you, but that does not mean that you become foolish. A man having mood swing in a church, we need to buy you sanitary pads. Because we don't know whether you are or you are. Whether you are or you are. Hallelujah. God is superior than me. What do I need to do? He cares for me. He cares about me. He cares about you. If you love your mother, say amen. amen. If you love your mother, say amen. amen. I don't need to ask you about your father. Because most of you, your father has offended you. So let me not humiliate some men. Because everybody will not say amen. So let's use only mothers as an example. If you love your mother. Do you know ordinary, as a woman, ordinary period pain? 
your mother is worried. As a man, as a man, as a man, is that the thing you are busy, girl, jumping up and down? Praise the living God. You want to be a charmer boy. Those of you, women, please, don't marry a mama's boy. Immediately, mama's boy fight with you as a wife. He's going to his mother to report you. <laughs> Every single offense you will commit to that man while the mother is still alive, you're already being hated. You know why? Because mama cares for the son. Please, ne? check background, check family, check everything. I, I'm advising you officially. Don't marry mama's boy. Men, you are allowed to care for your mom, but not your mother controlling your marriage. Telling you how to treat your wife, you're crazy. You must tell mama, did, did, did my, my, my father's uh, mother told my father how to treat you. As a man, everything you listen to your mother, even if you don't have a father, God look for a man that will teach you what it means to be a man. Because when a man, when a woman, your mother, that, if, if your mother advises you as a man regarding your wife, you have a problem. Because we men, even if their son is getting married, we men, they're always jealous and competitive of each other. It's natural. Praise the Lord. As a man, it's not every advice you take from your mother to keep your marriage. So, mama's boy, your mother will never allow any woman to hurt you. Imagine you left your house, you're squeezing your face, coming back home. The mother cares for her son. What happened to you? Uh, me and my wife, we're having an argument. The mother is already having an argument with your wife. I'm telling you how mother cares a lot. To the extent that they care is now crossing the boundary. A care of mother must be limited somehow. You know, as a mother, you, you pick up fight. There are some of you, your mother, your friend will fight with you. The mother is fighting back. If you're a parent and you're doing like that, ne, you better change. You, you don't fight. Don't stop fighting your children's fight. You must tell them, hey, go back, make peace. Even if they are wrong, even if they are right, humble them and tell them to go and apologize. Hey, who touched you? Don't worry, I'm going to face him. Who touched you? I'm going to face her. If mother cares a lot like this, what about your God? God is ready. Say, God is ready. Say, God is ready to save my life. God is ready to walk with me all the way. God is greater than, than, than me. Say, God is greater than me. Say, God is greater than all my thoughts. God is greater than us. You cannot defeat him. You cannot. Uh, there, like there's nothing you can do about it. My prayer for you is that you will follow this message to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say I pray for you. To follow this message to the end. It didn't finish. I have not started. I just touched places for those of you who are Sunday Sunday medicine. They will come back to the real deal. Praise the Lord. Imagine you only drink medicine on Sunday. Tell me how you will survive. If the doctor gives you a prescription, you drink it only on Sunday and keep the rest the whole week. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do you complain against him? You rely on pastors, prayer warriors. Don't worry, anytime I have a problem, I believe my pastor will pray for me. <laughs> My pastor will pray for me. Tell that your pastor to give you, to share, to divide their wealth and give you half. Then I'll believe they're praying for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Imagine, I'm praying for you, you're not making it. You think tomorrow, you, whatever God has given me, you want to take it from me. Maybe you'll be angry. Let's say I have 20 million. You're angry that I didn't give you 1 million. Why must you be angry that I didn't give you money? You can't make your own money. Did you hear what I'm saying? Praise the living God. You are relying on them to pray for you. But they are not relying on them to show you the way. Every time, every small problem, you come for prayers. Small headache, you go for prayers. In all the churches, not only fellow workers. You have a running stomach, they must pray. You forget that sometimes the stomach needs to recycle. Oh, this one is demonic. No, it's not demonic, it must run. 
If you are here and you have never had any stomach before, since you were born, then you are a spirit. Where is the living God? So there are some certain things that we must start developing common sense. Let's stop being this spiritual this, spiritual that, spiritual this, spiritual that, spiritual this one, spiritual the other one. I know God is showing me something. If God is showing you something, why can't God show you how you will be? And show you money. By now, you suppose those of you that claim that God is revealing things to you, why can't you start changing now? There are things that at least you need to start implementing in your life to the glory of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. God is showing you revelation where people are attacking you. God is showing you revelation where Pastor Ken and Brother Ken and Sister Ken. There are many Kens. How many of you are Ken here? They want to suck your blood. God is revealing to you that. That, that, that brother Ken is changing, is diverting from God to demonic kingdom. Excuse me. I still want to remind us. God is showing you all this and you are still broke. God. You are giving people prophets in this ministry and you are still broke like me. Praise the Lord. You know the way God is revealing things to you and you are not changing. But you know, I, I, I pray, you know. I pray that you will drive car before you die. Because by the time you start getting closer to the grave and people are buying a car, you get angry and start bewitching them. I just wish that this person will die in this car. Who does you think that it is? When you have your own stuff, you will never ask that question. Who does he or she think that he or he, he or she is? Who does he think? Somebody, look at this person has been praying for a job and managed to get a job. Just small job to enjoy their life. They managed to buy uh, Italian hair. Praise the living God. They wanted to buy Malawian hair. And now, they are working. Who does she think she is? This person has been praying for a job, waiting on God. Though. Who does? When you have your own stuff, embrace the change of God. Embrace the saving of God. Amen. Stop saying, I am saved in Christ Jesus. If you are saved in Christ Jesus, it's true you are a Christian because you are going to church. Listen, we have many police, right? They wear uniform, but many of them are criminal. Yeah. We have armies. They wear uniform all over the world, but most of them are high qualified civilized assassins. So we're all Christians here. How many of us are being saved? I was saved by, I was saved and redeemed by the blood of Christ. <laughs> it is not blood. That will make you rich. Praise the Lord. The blood of Christ is doing its work. It's not bringing money and food on your table. It is blood for sacrifice. And through it we have a covenant. Praise the Lord. So it's not making you rich. But it fights against any covenant that we deal with God's covenant, that we oppose God's covenant. By the blood of Jesus Christ we are rich. Do you even know the work of the blood? May God direct you, teach you, prepare you by his infinite mercy and grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The question I'm going to ask you, I pray it to be ringing in your head. Are you ready to be saved by God? Not by church, not by pastor, not by bishop, not by prophet. I've seen people attending many crusades of different giants in the kingdom of God, of different generals of God, that are still the same. How many of you here, you have attended the Bene, uh, not the Renard Bonke? You have attended his crusade. If you are here, say amen. There must be one. Are you fine? Because if you are fine, you won't be here. Praise the Lord. Uh, Any time a servant of God calls for a crusade, everybody is running. You are running there. Are you ready for a change to be saved? Because God has to save you. Saving is not, oh Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you as my Lord and what? But uh, personal savior. He's your personal savior, but is he a personal counselor and advisor? Amen. Amen. Enough of all this thing, Christian, depending on men and women of God to pray for them. Pray for yourself. Amen. Depend on yourself. Amen. Focus on yourself. Amen. Learn to mind your business. Amen. Amen. Every blessed day from morning till night, somebody's name is ringing in your head. You keep on thinking about somebody in a negative way. 
Do you know that your thought will form into a revelation? There are some revelations that are from God and there are some revelations that are just mirage. You keep on thinking, somebody is frustrating you. Somebody is going to keep on frustrating you. You will surely have revelation of the person. That's why some people, when they think I'm bad, they will see me in their dream. Because of your thought. Your thought can still come and visit you in your dream. Praise the living God. You keep on thinking too much. Mind your business. If you see me drinking, mind your business. If you see me smoking, I am not Jesus. Why must you be angry that I'm smoking? Go and get angry with God. Leave me alone. I don't have a, do I have any business with you? Can I say something? Did I say you should come to church? Did I invite anybody here? You came by yourself, right? So why must you concern yourself with my affairs? With the things that has to do with my life? Can't you see? That you are stepping, overstepping your boundaries. When you overstep your boundaries, you will see another country. When you see another country, what happens then? You will not know their language. You will not know how they behave. You are in South Africa. Most of you don't know what happens in other countries. Hallelujah. Most of you don't worry. See, I keep on telling you, they're going to do do last some of you. Is it that is about to go down? The city is about to go down. They're going to do like you. They will do do like you. When you get to another country, don't, don't tell them you're South African. If you get to another African country, don't, tell, don't, don't identify yourself. Because the angry one that their brother were killed here, were killed here, they will kill you. Praise the Lord. If you go to another country, you will no longer know their culture. Come, my dear, stand here. Stand, come. Let me give them. No, come. Face me, face me here. Face me, I face you. Move back a bit. This has to do with his life. This is you. This is another word. This is me, another word. Are you listening to me? So, for the fact that you're in South Africa, you know the rules, the laws of South Africa, right? You know how to work in this country. Work freely, right? Now, look at it. You're now looking at uh, Somalia. Look at Somalia. You enter Somalia. Praise the living God. What happened? This is a Somalian, right? And now, I have to fight with this Somalian to, 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 to occupy a place. I need to stand. I, I need to start building. I need to start working. I need to start afresh. Most of you, you will continue to start life afresh because you have left your world with your mentality. Leaving the directions of God, you are entering other people's world. This is how gossip kills you. You can't enter my life and survive. I can't enter your life and survive. I need to be here. Look at me. This is my world. And God will save me here. Most of the African brothers that were killed in African countries, not only South Africa, who is saving them? Did you saw in the video, very graphic, we as South Africans were throwing stones on the head of a foreigner. Even the person died, they're still throwing bricks on the head. Nobody was there to save them. If that person was in their country, nobody does that. Yeah. I can't come here and start beating South Africans, can I? See, all South Africans will pounce on me. Praise the living God. Now, I'm entering in your country to fight against you. Do you think I will not be protected? People that you fought against, you enter their life and their world. You will continue to start afresh. Something will surely beat you. Even people, if they are not serving God, don't fight them. There's authority that rules, controls, defend a man. I'm not talking about a man-man. Every human being. So that you are born again doesn't mean you start gossiping non-born again. Hallelujah. I say that everybody, we're all believers. But I'm just a believer of God. So my believers of whatever that I don't know. Stay in your world. Stay in your lane. Stop allowing people to go home with your mind while your body go to your house. Are you listening to me? Stop allowing your mind to go home with people. Like as I'm going home now, even as I'm speaking, they will not listen. As I'm going home now, we go with people's mind to my house. But I go there, you'll be fighting in a foreign land because that is not your land. Be where God wants you to be. 
prepare yourself to be saved. Nobody can be saved in a foreign land. We are not the enemies of ourselves. In the church, in the Christian body, we have become the enemies of each other. It's not prospering us. We are competing with each other. It's not helping us. Spiritually, we are not even growing. We are stagnated. I don't like a church where they call Jesus, Jesus for the whole year. And there's no atom of change. I pray this moment, may the God of peace reward us with peace. That through peace, we can see very clear. As we see very clear, we stop everything that has to do with life of others. Focus on our lives. You can never leave your mansion and God starts sweeping another person's house. Sweep your house. Clean your house. Do your laundry. Before you ask me, can I do your laundry? By the time you finish doing your laundry, you will not have energy to do mine. I do mine, you do yours. Every blessed time, we must be ready for us to be saved. Not being ready for people to be scattered. Stand on your feet to be continued. Begin to appreciate.